Welcome. Today we are going to be taking the lessons that we learned with the cylinder. We're going to be rolling it over to a real world object. In this instance, we're going to be referring to a spaceship. Um, it's going to be part of our imagination. We're going to also part draw from the Falcon Heavy uh, SpaceX rocket ship. Um, so with that, let's jump on over. So this is not going to be an exact replica by any means, but pretty much what I'm doing is I'm using the whole idea of the Falcon Heavy to just kind of illustrate how you can roll over these principles of things that we have learned into, let's say, things that are relevant to everyday technology around you, everyday life around you. So my sons were very excited when the Falcon Heavy launched. And so um, I thought it'd be fun to reference this very exciting development um, in space engineering. So this is nothing more than a cylinder. Um, I'm not really worrying about problems of perspective. I'm just gonna be doing a very basic cylinder right here. And what I am going to try to do is reduce this whole entire thing to its most basic components. So if this is the main um, section of the rocket, then I'm going to be putting on either side, I'm gonna overlap on either side as if we're looking at it a little bit to the side. I'm gonna overlap the, I believe these are, my sons <laughs> will watch this and correct me, I believe these are the side um, cylinders which contain the fuel. But no matter, we don't need to go into all the precise terminology. Simply put, what we're trying to do is understand how to use the cylinder and roll, roll it over to develop drawings somewhat from our imagination. So um, the basics of this right here, I'm going to, it shows me that I need to now get rid of some of the, um, just the basic uh, form, those searching lines that we have in the beginning. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to find new forms within these existing forms. So the top of the Falcon Heavy, it is almost as if there's another cylinder up here. So it's like a cylinder within a longer cylinder. And then that cylinder within the cylinder um, is rounded towards the top. And then there's a taper and it comes in a bit more. And again, I do not claim to understand anything about rocketry. I do not <laughs> know the terminology for any of the engineering, but I believe that the transport takes place up here and that in one of the vessels that uh, Elon Musk actually put a Tesla vehicle in here, if I'm correct not in a Falcon Heavy, but in some other rocket. Okay, so we have that upper cylinder. Now we have a smaller cylinder within that cylinder, and that cylinder runs down. Uh, none of my lines are gonna be perfect. If I wanted to, I could go get a ruler and I can make a really perfect line, but the reason why I don't get a ruler out is because then I start to get like super precise and it really stifles my drawing. And truth be told, I, I just don't want to go down that road. This is not a drawing, an engineering drawing that is going to a 3D printer. This is me just trying to just gain dexterity. Um, this is me trying to, you know, in a way, almost um, gain agility with moving my entire arm. So now the tops of these side canisters for fuel, they are rounded as well. This one kind of disappears behind the rocket because we're viewing it a little bit from an angle. And now what I'm doing is I'm kind of strengthening the external contour of all these objects. kind of making them a little bit bolder. Okay, so now let's go on to some of the 
um, more the, the subtle information. So um, I do not uh, know the name of all of these uh, small little sections up here, but there are these tiny little, almost like portals on the sides of these canisters over here. And then these are all somehow threaded together. There is almost what appears to be a little like binding that comes along here, which I'm assuming breaks off at a certain point. We could get much more precise than that. We could do so later. Uh, at this point, um, oh, I realized I made a mistake, and it's actually <clears throat> good for me to make a mistake in front of you guys so that you can see that I have to correct certain things. Um, I can't imagine that that would have run straight across. If this is round, and if this is round, if all these things are round, then I would imagine that this would have somewhat of a rounded element to it. I could be wrong, but it helps to give the three-dimensional feel to it right here. Okay, so... I'm going to put some, I'm going to echo these lines right here to give more convincing form. Uh, there are some tail fins down here, which I'm just going to summarize as being triangles that meet. So I will put three lines that echo the shape of the ends of the cylinder, the plane of the cylinder itself. I'll put three lines over there. And then I'll just mark out like one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, just six different points of origin for these fins. These fins are going to be nothing more to start with as they're going to be nothing more than triangles. And they overlap each other in a way that's definitely not precise. But again, this is not an engineering spec. This is just for us to get a feel for something. And the bottom of the tail fin will cut away like this. Okay, so now let's light this. So I'm going to put my light source over here. And if it's the case that the light is coming from here, um, we do not want to put the shadow shape right in the middle. I prefer to have two-thirds light, one-third shadow, or one-third light, two-thirds shadow. So for this, I'm going to go two-thirds light, one-third shadow, and I'm going to run over the cylindrical form. So each cylindrical object will have its own cast, its own shadow shape. And now with that, I'm going to shade in. Okay. So now, if we want to strengthen this, one of the things uh, quickly that I always do is you could put a cast shadow coming off of this. So if the light's coming from here, the cast shadow will not, the light will not be able to reach behind it. And so the cast shadow, it will be dark right here. The shadow is darkest at the base. That's where the least light can reach. So I kind of strengthen it and darken it most here. And then I taper it somewhat as it comes out. Um, this is where I cheat as an artist, and I use my finger. And I will blend out like that. I'll also blend on the rocket itself to give it kind of like a soft shadow. And then once I've done that, we can spend a whole lot more time um, 
just getting into the specifics of this rocket, I could spend another two hours on this drawing, but I just wanted to get a feel for the most basic elements. So I'm gonna clean up some of these lines. I'm gonna get rid of that light source. And let's uh, put a little trick on here. Uh, let's do a little trick so that we can heighten what's on here. So the light over here, let's put a little bit of dark behind it to pop that light off. And we'll just kind of have a gradient. Again, we can use our hands in order to blend the background. And then we can tidy up by going in here and erasing all the areas where our pencil might have overlapped. Um, you yourself, as an artist, you can really slow this video down. You can stop at many points. Um, and you can bring this to a really high level of detail and finish. But this is the bones of what the drawing of a rocket like this will be. Um, one thing that I like to do whenever I'm trying to impart a sense of vastness and grandeur and just something monumental is I will put the figure of let's say a human down here which is oftentimes just done almost by drawing like a, a little shape with a dot on the top of it and so that looks from a distance people actually look like this you just see sometimes if it's a man the shoulders can be broader and a little dot on the top and more of a feminine figure. You have it a little bit more of a diamond shape with a dot at the top. And you can then give those figures a little bit of cast shadow coming off of them, which is kind of neat because it echoes this right here. So it almost looks like it's early morning before the launch of the rocket. And now that that rocket, which kind of seemed whatever, you couldn't really tell what size it was, now it feels huge because we have broaden these figures to give this a sense of scale. Um, so with that, that is the drawing of our rocket. Uh, I encourage you to take this much further. There's a whole lot more detail. You can put the wording wrapping around it. You can um, have the, the vertical lettering going on it. Uh, there's just so much more that you can do. You can have birds flying in front of it, tiny little birds, which again, all these things will just give a sense of the immensity um, of the spaceship. But for what I've given you right here, you have the, the foundation laid for a very uh, detailed drawing, if you so choose. Thanks so much for tuning in.